gentlemen, we are back with another beautiful episode of The Weekly Beat. My name is Dumi Jere. I'm coming to you from Johannesburg in South Africa. Uh, as always, my beautiful sister is with me, Maggie Mutesi, uh, coming to us from Dakar in Senegal. Maggie, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, Dumi. Uh, how are you? How is your Monday, your week? You know, what's up? No, uh, the Monday is good. The week is shaping up to be a great one. I hope it stays yeah. that way. Mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of Mondays, um, the Chogam meeting uh, has started uh, this Monday in Rwanda, or Kigali, Rwanda. Uh, mm -hmm. For those that are not in the know, Chogam means, uh, stands for Commonwealth Heads of Government Meeting. So essentially, heads of state um, that belong to the Commonwealth Group uh, gathering in uh, Kigali, Rwanda to discuss uh, a whole range of various, um, you know, um, uh, well, conversations around matters affecting their respective countries, I guess. Mm. Uh, this is probably the second time that, uh, you know, an East African country is hosting this, um, this meeting. The first time being in 2007 when it was held in Uganda. Prior to that, well, I think the only other country that well, that I'm interested in that I remember is Zimbabwe, and that was in <laughs> 1991. Funny enough, mm. speaking of Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe was kicked out of the Commonwealth. Oh my goodness! Um, yeah, some years ago, and they've been trying to reapply. So uh, they've been trying to get these member states, you know, to speak to, to put in a good word, like put mm. in a good word for me, hey, bro, mm. uh, <laughs> so that they can be readmitted. Mm. And I actually don't understand why Zimbabwe wants to go in. Sometimes I feel like, uh, is there really a benefit to these kind of organizations? Um, or do, do they actually go somewhere? Or do they actually, you know, result in certain tangible stuff? Are yeah. there certain benefits for the member states? Uh, or is it just another platform where we meet and advance whatever interests that we, or oh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> what is your take, Maggie? I think we really have a mutual feeling when it comes to like uh, organizations like the Commonwealth or even yeah. the Francophonie that it brings together uh, mm. the French former French colonies. Um, the, the question is always, um, how have we really moved towards our own independence if we're still believing in a, a certain umbrella that yeah. was built under you know the conviction of uh, an empire that really wanted to have control of certain countries and obviously yeah. with the commonwealth they say you know it's voluntary and it has 54 yes. independent and equal countries but is that really true i, I don't, don't think know again when you look at their website and goes to 2.5 billion people uh most you know these these are the countries that are, are part of the umbrella of the organization and some of most of them are obviously big economies like uh, britain and india but you know we also know that within there are very many island states like you know the the likes jamaica. of uh, jamaica and all of these uh yeah. that you would think because they are into this one umbrella and there is big players like Britain, maybe yeah. there would be a shared interest in terms of um, economy, in terms of trade and investment and all of that. But I, I guess this is something we could delve deeper to understand really how this really yeah. works. Uh, yeah. There are shared goals and what are these and what kind of really uh, um, uh. Uh, impact have such organizations like these had. Of course, obviously with Chogum, you, we've, we know of the foundation itself, we know of uh, the scholarships. But I, mm. I feel like modern day um, development goes beyond and further just mm. scholarships. It goes towards, you know, mutual interests of, you know, having countries support you and countries, yeah. you know, um, uh, trade and mm. cooperate on a mutual respectful level. And yeah. I'm hoping that maybe uh, this is a beginning of this, or these are conversations that we obviously have. And um, also having it in Rwanda and seeing how Britain itself has been reacting to the story of the immigrants. Of the it makes me wonder. Yeah. Like, yeah. really, you guys don't even think Rwanda is a, a great country to host refugees. Mm. You know, if we still have that mentality, uh, mm. really where we headed uh, but that's yeah. a story for another day do yeah yeah 
You know, do you like, think uh, there hmm? is yeah. something tangible in terms of trade, in terms of uh, respect? Because if organizations like these are built, or rather built on the foundation of colonialism, it's yeah, very it hard is. for equality, respect, hmm. and dignity to be on, on, on a mutual level. I don't know what you yeah. think, though. You know, um, I was looking at the theme. Uh, yeah. and their theme this year is what uh, delivering a common future, yeah. uh, connecting, innovating, and mm. transforming, right? Mm. Uh, and as I think about it, really, it's almost like you know the 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 purpose of the theme is yes. to sort of highlight that um, uh, all member states within the Commonwealth are innovating, they are uh, connecting, they are transforming. Uh, in order, you know, to achieve the cherished and common objectives uh, and goals. Uh, for example, uh, what, what like, like protecting natural resources mm. Mm. or even promoting international trade, which leads back to what you're asking, international mm. trade, right? Mm. Um, for me, the where I fail to connect the two is where one, mm. just a couple of weeks ago or so, or some episodes ago, we had an episode where we were, uh, it's not even one episode. It's really a lot of episodes where we focus on the AFCFTA. Absolutely. And, and regional we, integration. Right. And where we're mm. saying like um, intra-African trade uh, is, 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 is at a very low number, if not a single digit percentage. Mm. Right? Whereas uh, in Asia and Europe, it's, uh, you know, 50s, 56% or 17, I mean, or whatever percent, like, but it's higher. Mm. So they trade with each other more. Right. And we are coming up with this bill and nations are ratifying the instruments and the works uh, so that, you know, we 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 can increase more intra-African trade, remove barriers to trade, make sure there's free movement of people and goods and services, the works and all of that stuff. Because what why we are saying we've got um, a big, a big uh, population to service and it opens up a bigger GDP uh, mm. com a combined GDP of all of these countries, right? Mm. So now, uh, as a, as a, as a leader, as a as a president of my country, then how do I reconcile all of these things? Um, I'm supposed to boost intra-African trade because yeah. we are saying there are more people that we can service within this particular continent. Okay, we can't even meet the current demand at the rate at which we are going right now, right? And then we say, okay, let's pack that issue on the side for a minute. Let's go to Chogam and see what we can do with, uh, mm. I mean, what business deals can come up with, uh, you know, UK, mm. Australia, New Zealand, Jamaica, and all of those things. Mm. Frankly speaking, I haven't quite heard trade going on between, say, Jamaica and a country like Mozambique uh, or Zambia, for yeah. example. Uh, mm. I haven't quite heard... Uh, any trade going on between that? Um, yes. There are some things that I, I want to say, but I'm not sure if I should go no, ahead I, and I, say I, them yeah, on this platform. I, <laughs> I, I guess that's this is why we're podcasting. Obviously, I read I read somewhere, and, and I'm going to read this entirely as it is. And yeah, uh, yeah. this was an expert, uh, yeah. an article I read, and he said, you know, yeah. for many countries joining the Commonwealth, it's more about developing soft power and expanding, yeah. extending their voice across the globe than increasing their trade relationships with the English-speaking world. And then he goes ahead to, to mention that many of these countries are indeed attracted by the Commonwealth as it promotes the English language as the international language of trade and diplomacy. Uh, hmm. I think that was Philip Murphy from the Institute of Commonwealth Studies at the University of London. But obviously, we are in yeah. 2022 and we're speaking about, you know, uh, um, being a part of organization because of, you know, the English language and the fact language. that it gets us to the global uh, mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. um, I personally have been really reading more and I saw somewhere that, you know, with the Commonwealth, um, it's very cheap for countries within uh, actually, I think they said 19% cheaper for member states to export to one another really? than to the outside country and outside countries. But how often does, for example, Jamaica trade with Zambia, like you said? That's what I'm saying. Or yeah. how often do you know Zimbabwe trade with the um, Bahamas? 
uh, or you know, Haiti, um, Haiti is French, any of those islands uh, far away. It's um, yeah. it's not really. So I, I guess for me, the relevance, it comes back to the question of the relevance of the Commonwealth in Africa today. And mm. uh, what is its importance? And, you know, um, like you see it in an equation where we have the AFCFTA, we have the EEC, mm. we have all these regional blocks. Where do these organizations really fit in? And when we see countries like Togo now applying to join the Commonwealth or Zimbabwe, reapplying to rejoin, mm -hmm. what is in it for them really? Um, is it to just be a part of an English, um, you know, club? Or what are those benefits? And and I, I think, Dumi, if we can help our, our, our listeners really think deep and see if there's anything really we think, um, because it's a question a lot of people have really asked me as well. I, yeah. um, to what extent is it relevant now? Well, of course, uh, it's a global stage. It's a global, um, you know, um, uh, economy. We we obviously have to play. But is yeah. do you think also it's um, it's a part of you know Britain also going away, brexiting, looking for partners yeah. far away, especially you know. You're out of the EU, but you have your your people or somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, this is my yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to put it that way, but you know, you yeah. think about it in different ways. So, I, I I mean, the fact that it's a bit cheaper for member states to trade with each other is really great and awesome. But that's uh, just a claim. Are we claim. really we don't know how far true that is. advantage of that? And um, you know, what's in it now? And mm. what are we looking at? Really, when we talk about Chogam 2022, what are we talking about? Yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, obviously, like you mentioned, uh, all of these countries were connected historically. There's a history between all, all of these countries, right? Mm. Um, it's sad to say, but a colonial history. Um, mm. And from there, that's where, you know, post the countries then gaining independence and all of that, mm. there's friendship, mm. goodwill, mm. Well, and of course, the English language, right? Uh, I've got mates that stay in uh, in UK, uh, and they usually sometimes send pictures of stuff that they'll find in mm. the UK shops that has been mm. imported from you know Zimbabwean farms and all of that. That's stuff. awesome. So uh, from from that angle, I guess maybe that's where you know the the, the preferential trade I mean, trade rates come mm. in, mm. Um, but. Personally, for me, I mean, going back to my sentiments when we started the show, uh, I feel like, you know, uh, the relevance of, you know, uh, the Commonwealth is slowly but surely losing its, you know, this, the, its stature. The mm -hmm. um, African Union is doing all it can to unite the whole African community, and we can't even supply uh, our own continent. Yet mm. uh, here we are trying to you know, uh, do trade with other people and supply things that we may not even have capacity to produce mm. to Jamaica, to Australia, to wherever. Mm. Yeah, yeah, who knows? Maybe the forex is 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 is, is attractive, but mm. surely, um, don't they say charity starts at home sometimes? So yeah, I feel like <laughs> that all of these heads of states, we need to be focusing more. <laughs> On, um, <laughs> don't laugh, Maggie. Uh, no, I this is like, like a call to all those attending, and you know, yeah. <laughs> but you know, there's a, there's a, uh, there's the Commonwealth Business Summit that I actually saw a lineup, and I thought this was really impressive. Yeah. Um, in, in terms Tell of you know, partnerships, and yeah, and um, it has some of the leading, uh, you know, British companies and CEOs and African. Africans from all over um, different fields in the private sector. And it's really yeah. good for networking and communicating and, you know, being able to to forge partnerships, obviously. We also, on the other hand, Dumi, I always feel like we can't walk alone. Hmm. We can't walk alone. Yeah, fair I, enough, I alone. fair enough. But maybe I hope... My my hope and is is that maybe this time around as the meeting Kigali there are certain things that are, you know discussed, or um, if uh, if it's like you said rebuilding, restructuring, and different ways of doing business. I mean, it's nothing is as usual. Uh, yeah. Everything has become really disrupted in one way or the other. So hmm. maybe we need to move towards that. This is actually my hope. I hope so too. I hope so. Mm. Um, <laughs> there's a part that worries me though. About Which how, is? 
uh, how most of these, particularly the African countries hmm. that are participating in this, are huge recipients of aid from UK. And the UK is like, you know, the head boy of this Commonwealth. Hmm. Um, really, shouldn't you be looking at more trade rather than aid? Aid. Uh, I think the time is over now for for us to be living on handouts. Mm. Uh, if we're getting into any relationship with any country, let it be a win-win uh, for everybody involved. Not mm. necessarily one where there's one that's posturing as the bigger person than the other. Mm. So as small as you may be, as a country, even if you're talking to India or if you're talking to UK or you're talking to Australia, yeah. You should not feel like, oh, I'm small. Uh, therefore, these guys can do what they want. Uh, because at the end of the day, you are waiting for some aid of sorts from mm. you know, the, 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 the UK government. Um, I really f- feel and hope and wish that um, you know our African governments mm. uh, move away from this practice. Uh, maybe it's a good thing, actually, that this thing is being held in uh, Kigali, Rwanda, because President Kagame has been very vocal around mm. Africa is not should not be relying on aid. Let's go into partnerships and trade mm. together uh, mm. for the benefits of both our people and not exploiting the one another. Mm. So yeah, uh, look, folks, um, we will be as always. We will be uh, writing some of the key takeouts from um, this um, uh, meeting of heads of states of Commonwealth. Uh, on our um, uh, platform, the oh, not platform, but newsletter, the third opinion, which comes out every Friday morning. And yeah. uh, please do subscribe where we give you our opinions on uh, some of these matters that we'll have touched on earlier on on the podcast during the week or during the beginning of the week. So um, please look out for our assessment of how the Chogam meeting is going, uh, or what are some of the key takeouts to look out for. Um, and also please visit our website mansamedia.africa uh, in case you might have missed anything uh, in the week from me myself and uh, Maggie the team behind the scenes uh, it's Adios. peace and profits, and profits. <laughs> that's my favorite <laughs> part <laughs>